and welcome back. It's time for this week's Bible study, and you guys know what time it is. And as you know, before we get into our lesson, for this video, let's praise God. When night is falling, when fear is calming, still you're calling me. Yeah, when faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm
that when you enter a courtroom, you have to abide by a set of rules? These rules all have meaning behind them. For example, every witness who comes up to testify in a case must promise to tell the truth. A witness will raise their right hand or sometimes place their hand on the Bible as a reminder that telling the truth is important and that God knows the truth. In today's Bible story, we are going to hear about a time Jesus shared a very special meal with his disciples. This was the last time they ate together before his death on the cross. This meal was not just about food. Every part of the meal had meaning behind it. I cannot wait for you to learn from God's word. All that Jesus taught us through the Last Supper. As we have been doing each time we meet together, we are going to answer our main question that God helps us to focus on and what God would have us to learn from his word. Our main question is, what did Jesus do to save us? That's right! Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. We begin learning about Jesus' last days on the earth with Jesus entering Jerusalem during the triumphal entry. People welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem as their king by waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna! Then we heard how the religious leaders questioned Jesus and how Jesus spoke with wisdom and authority. Today, we will hear the story of the Last Supper Jesus shared with his disciples. You may have heard this story before, but there's always something new that we can learn in God's Word. Let's check it out, the Last Supper. Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Long ago, God delivered his people from slavery in Egypt. He sent 10 plagues to Egypt. And during the 10th plague, the firstborn of the Egyptians died. The Israelites smeared the blood of a lamb on their doorpost and God kept them safe. He passed over their houses. God said that once a year, the Israelites should celebrate the Passover to remember how he rescued them. He told his people when and how to celebrate. On the day when the Jewish people were supposed to kill the Passover lamb, Jesus sent Peter and John to get the meal ready. He said, go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him. Jesus said that the man would go to a house and the homeowner would show Peter and John a large room upstairs with furniture in it. That was the place Jesus wanted them to get the Passover meal ready. So Peter and John did as Jesus said. When the Passover meal was ready, Jesus and his disciples reclined to eat. Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were upset, but Jesus knew this was part of God's plan. Peter said he would never betray Jesus, but Jesus said Peter would deny him three times. Then Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God for it, broke it, and then gave it to his disciples to eat. Jesus said, this is my body, which I am giving for you. Do this to remember me. Jesus took the cup and gave it to his disciples. They drank from it. And Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. They sang a hymn together, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus knew he would be arrested and would suffer. Then he would die on the cross to take the punishment for the sins of the world. On the third day, Jesus would rise from the dead. The New Covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus' death and resurrection will be forgiven of his sins and will have eternal life. Jesus' disciples were used to celebrating the Passover every year as a part of their Jewish tradition. What did they celebrate as Passover? Passover was a time for the Jewish people to remember and celebrate how God protected his people and delivered them out of the slavery in Egypt. God had told them to celebrate the Passover every year, but this celebration was very different for Jesus' disciples. As soon as the meal was ready, everyone reclined at the table. Jesus said someone at the table would betray him. The disciples were upset. Peter said that he would never turn against Jesus. We will see later in the story whether Peter's word was true. The disciples were familiar with different elements of the Passover meal, representing something. But this time when Jesus served the bread, what did he say the bread represented? Well, if you look at Matthew 26, 26, he said that the bread was his body. 
What did he say the contents of the cup represented? Look at Matthew 26, 27 through 28. It represented his blood as the new covenant. Just as God had told the Jews to remember and celebrate God's deliverance of his people during Passover, Jesus commanded his disciples to remember his sacrifice. Jesus used this special supper to help explain God's great plan of salvation for all people. Jesus showed his disciples with the bread and the cup that he is the true Passover lamb. God's people had broken the old covenant and God promised to make a new covenant to forgive sins. The new covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus' death and resurrection will be forgiven of his sins and will have eternal life. And that's something we should want to share. We can all be a part of God's family and experience his love and forgiveness. If you want to be a part of God's family, why don't you repeat this prayer after me? God, I love you. Thank you for your son Jesus and the sacrifice he made for my sins. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins and make me clean. Now God, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Fill me with your Holy Spirit to help me and guide me. In Jesus' name, amen. See, that wasn't so hard. God loves you so much, boys and girls, and wants you to continue to grow. Remember, we still have a part to play. We should be making choices every day that shows others the love of God. And speaking of making choices, I'm going to make a choice right now that includes a porcupine and a popsicle that tastes like pizza. See y'all next time. Thank you. Bye.